So one thing about anime is that sometimes you can see the eyebrows and even parts of the eye through the character's hair. And this is not by accident, it's an actual design choice. But you might notice with Blender, it's 3D, so the eyebrows will naturally be blocked by the hair. But obviously, we want this to not happen. We want the eyebrows in front. So I found a few ways to do this, and they all have different strengths and weaknesses, but if you want to learn how to do it, I'm about to show you right now. Now the first way I'll show you is through compositing. And basically what this is, is we tell Blender to render certain parts of the image over others. Now for this to work, we need to first go into Render Properties, then Film, and make sure transparent is checked. Then we have to set up our collections. So as you can see, I have three collections here, which is the over, under, and then everything else. In over, I put the parts that I want to be shown through the hair, including my eyebrows, eyelashes, and the iris of the eye, which you don't have to include, but that's up to you. And then in under, I just need the bangs. You can isolate the bangs in the collection because you might not want the eyebrows to go through other parts of the hair. But again, that's up to you. And then everything else you just put it in the other folder. Then we have to assign all of these collections to different view layers. So you might not know about view layers, but everything you need is up here. All of this is already one view layer, but you can create new ones by going here and clicking add view layer. And we have to create two new view layers one for over and one for under. So add view layer, new. Then you can name them over and under just to make it easier for yourself, but I've already done this. So I'll just show you what's in each layer. So in under, literally all you do is untick everything except the under collection. So let's untick this box and untick this box and we'll just be left with under. And you'll do the same thing for over, which you'll untick all of the boxes of the collections except for over. And then you'll be able to clearly see what's gonna be over, what's gonna be under, because it's gonna show up right here in your viewport. Now do note that they do have to be in collections because that's the, that's the only way this is gonna work. And for the check boxes like that to show up, you'll notice that they don't have this for just single, single objects. Then after you've done all of this, you want to go over to your compositing tab up here. And then this will be unchecked. Use nodes. You're going to want to check it. And then you can just pause this right now if you want to copy this whole node setup, but I'll quickly show you how to set it up. So we just do shift A to quickly add nodes, starting with a composite. Shift A again, add a viewer. And this is just so we can, you know, render and see our final result. Now shift A again, add render layers, and you're going to want to duplicate this twice. So I'm using shift D to duplicate, shift A. Last thing you'll need is an alpha over. And you're going to want to duplicate this once. So you'll have three render layers, two alpha overs, viewer and composite. First render layer should be everything. Second one will be the under layer. The third one will be over. And you just want to connect them like this, image to image of the alpha over. Second render layer to the second image of the first alpha over. Connect this alpha over to the first image of the second alpha over. Your last render layer, put it in the second image of the second alpha over, and then just connect this image to both of these. Now we can go to render, render image, and if we have a camera set up, we can see if it worked. Now, as you can see, it works just fine for what we're trying to achieve, but this is probably my least favorite method because it gets pretty complicated to set up. And you know, you might not want to sort your collections like this, if you know what I mean. And you can't even see it until it's rendered. Like in the viewport, you can't see it. And rendering takes longer because you know, it has to render all these different layers before you get your final product. And if you're making a video instead of just one image, it takes even longer. So there's another method. And the second method is through transparency. Now this one at the end, it looks kind of unique, but it's not as accurate to the anime look, just a disclaimer. 
But regardless, it's still one way to do it. So anyways, this one might be a little easier to set up because you just need to play around with some shading notes. I got a simple hair material here. This is my hair material. Now hold on, this is important. In material properties, you wanna set your blend mode to alpha hashed. And your BSDF can be whatever you want. And it can be more complicated than just a single node. But again, just for this example, it's a simple emission node. But anyways, what you wanna do is shift A, add a transparent BSDF. And you're gonna mix this with a mix shader. So let's put that mix shader right in between our uh, main BSDF and the material output, and then mix in the transparent BSDF. Now your hair looks transparent and you can see the eyebrows through your hair, but you don't want all of this hair to be transparent. So we have this little combination here, which is texture coordinate, mapping, separate X, Y, Z, and color ramp. Object goes into vector, vector goes into vector, and Z goes into factor. Then once you've made all of these nodes, you just put color into factor. And this way, you can make only uh, the bottom part of the bangs transparent where the eyebrows will be at. And that's how you'll be able to see the eyebrows through the hair. But actually this mapping node, when it starts out, everything's at zero, right? So it's gonna look like this. And that's not how you want it to look. First of all, you'll probably want to set the X rotation to minus 90. And if this makes it so that you don't see anything, you might have to play around with the Y rotation as well. So around minus five works for me here. Or you can also play around with the location. You can also fine tune it with the color ramp. So playing around where the black and the white sections are will put the color ramp in a different spot. And you could even add like one in the middle here, the gray, if you want to fine tune it a little more. But that's what the end result will end up looking like. And again, not my favorite, it's just one way to do it, but I don't really like how this is all grainy and stuff. So my current favorite is the next one I'll be showing you. So the third method is to use Goo Engine, which is a special version of Blender made specifically for anime. Now it's available for free on their GitHub, but if you don't know how to use their installation method, then you may have to pay a few bucks to download a ready to use version from the Patreon. Anyways, in this version of Blender, they have additional nodes. And there's one that's made specifically for this purpose called Set Depth. And here's how to set it up. So this is my eyelash material actually. And as a prerequisite to this one, show back face needs to be on in the material properties. Again, it's just a simple one node shader. It's just an emission plugged into the material output. But if we want the eyelashes to show over the hair, then we need this combo, which is camera data, add, set depth, and shader to RGB. Now, actually, this is a math node, not add. So if you're searching for it, you can't search add because you won't find it. You'll have to search for math. And that's how you get this node that says add on top. Everything else is the same name. Like you can shift A, just search whatever. But anyways, view Z depth goes into the first value. Value goes into view depth and shader goes into shader. And then shader to RGB color goes into surface. And then you just take your BSDF, plug emission into shader here. Now this doesn't do anything yet because you have to play around with the value of the view Z depth. So here's where you adjust it. You'll notice that immediately as you go into the negatives, it will already show over it. I personally put this one at negative 1.5. Sorry, I mean negative 0.15. And what this does is actually makes it so that it's not too far forward. So like here you can see the hair actually blocks it. It doesn't go all the way through. And you might want that, you might not want that. If you don't want that and you just want it to always show through, just use a higher value and it'll always like just be in front. 
And then you just repeat this for whatever other materials that you want to show in front of the hair. The disadvantage of Goo Blender, of course, is that you have to pay for it if you don't know how to install it yourself. And there is a visual glitch sometimes, like if you use the, the preset viewpoints and you're using the set depth, it will sometimes not show correctly whatever you put the set depth nodes in. But it's going to be fine in the renders. And also, once you rotate it, it's, it's, it's automatically going to fix itself. But I will remind you though that the first method is free and can accomplish pretty much the same thing. However, I do like using Goo Engine because it has other features that are made specifically for the anime art style, which we might cover in other videos. But anyways, that's it for now. Please like the video if it helped. And sub or comment if you want more content on anime tips in Blender. Peace.